These are the officers involved in this case. Uh, every one of them. I show this to you because this case has been racially charged. And it's important to me for you to see the officers involved in this case. Almost all are minority officers and race really didn't play any role in this at all. Zero. So I will, uh, I will begin by saying since taking office, the single most important thing to me is to connect with the community and earn the trust. It's the pulse of this office. When I saw this case, I immediately wanted all the facts to be transparent as possible. The community I know that is hurting by this only knows one side of the story. The community I know needs to hear the other side. Mr. Gibson was initially stopped and questioned because he was going door to door, which caught the deputy's attention because many homes are burglarized by people going door to door, knocking on doors. When questioned and asked for his identification, Mr. Gibson stated he had no ID. When asked how old he was, he stated he was 19 years old and that his name was Marvin Gibson and his date of birth was 10 12 of 99. Mr. Gibson falsified his name and date of birth to the deputy, saying he was 19 and giving a date of birth of 10 12 of 99 would have made him 17 years old. This further raised the deputy's suspicion. I'm now going to have you look at the video. This further proves of the uh, a description of what went on at that scene at that very moment of him giving his name and his date of birth, how old he was. Let's go ahead, Chief. Well, do you have ID? Uh, no, no. Uh, no? Okay, step over here. An officer asked you to come soon and talk to him? Yes, sir, I'm standing here. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, 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 but when I saw you, you were going to go over to go over to Yeah, I'm putting my day to start out. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, see, that's what I'm trying to find out. Yeah, well, okay. that's how you have to act. You know, you see me cutting that. Let me see your ID. I don't have it on me. How old are you? 19. What's your name? Marlon. Marlon what? Yeah. Say goodbye. All right, so as you can tell, you heard the date of birth, you heard him give his name, you heard him give his age. He falsified uh, who he was, which is going to raise the concern of any officer anywhere. And it raised the concern of Deputy Gates. Mr. Gibson then fled the scene. Deputies apprehended Mr. Gibson at his home where a struggle ensued and Mr. Gibson was tased and sustained a, a dog bite. Uh, the people that were cutting grass at this location claimed they did not know Mr. Gibson. They said his name was Charles, when in fact one of the people cutting grass was his brother, Marcus Gibson. Okay. After arresting him, it was discovered that Mr. Gibson had a warrant for his arrest for assault, threat to cause injury, in October of 2015 with our agency. Mr. Gibson falsified his identity to our deputy because of this open warrant. Mr. Gibson was arrested, and the Harris County District Attorney's Office accepted charges for evading arrest, failure to identify as being a fugitive from justice. <coughs> Mr. Gibson's, it should be noted, has two other pending cases with law enforcement. One that occurred in March of 2017 by the Blinn Police Department for failing to uh, identify and giving false fictitious name when he encountered Blinn PD, which is the same case we have on Mr. Gibson. And the second case occurred on April 26, 2017 by Brenham PD for resisting arrest search. I want the family to know, Mr. Gibson's family to know, 
that if they have concerns for us conducting this investigation in any way, the family came in and filed an internal affairs complaint today, that if they have any concerns at all, that, that, or if they feel uncomfortable with us conducting this internal affairs investigation, <coughs> I have spoken to the Texas Rangers, and I am happy, and they are willing to accept this case and investigate this case. I want the family to know that I, like them, always want to know the truth. As an administrator of a law enforcement agency, that's the only way that the public is going to have confidence in us, is by knowing the truth. And what I have seen thus far from Mr. Gibson is falsities, <coughs> untruths. He has not been truthful about anything. And I can tell you I have a dedicated workforce here. I stress uh, <coughs> the importance of the office looking <coughs> like the community that we serve. Uh, we have one of the most diverse offices there is in Harris County, and I'm proud of that. And it really incenses me to have somebody say that they were targeted because of their race. I love our minority community. I work hard to gain the trust of the minority community, and I love the minority community. And for somebody to say that our officers are targeting them because of their race, it bothers me. So I'm happy to answer any questions that you have uh, with regards to this case. Uh, as I said earlier, the officers involved in this case uh, cannot offer you any uh, details about the case because it's a pending case before a court. As a matter of practice, this case or any other, yes. if a citizen asks an officer for their name or their identification, Mm -hmm. What is the proper response? The proper response is to first find out from the suspect who they are. That's normal. You never want to have somebody that law enforcement encounters to control what's happening during the stop. It's best for the officer to find out who he's talking to, and that's all this really needed. <coughs> all he had to do was give his name and date of birth. The officer would have gone back to his computer in his car, entered in his car that... Uh, somebody was going house to house trying to get yard work, trying to potentially uh, acquire yard work, and that if any subsequent calls came in, they would know we've already spoke to the guy and we've already identified the guy, and that would be it. But traditionally, law enforcement, just like on a traffic stop, we don't let people that we pull over, because technically you're under arrest during a traffic stop, we don't let a violator how to dictate the rules of how it goes. That's how officers can get hurt. So, so this could you take handcuffs? Appropriate response? Um, when you have somebody that you now know is lying to you about who they are because he figured out in his mind as he was sitting there that the age he gave was 19 and the date of birth that he gave made him 17, when someone's being dishonest about that, I can assure you uh, it, it raises the bar much higher because there's really, in our opinion, there's no reason to lie about who you are and your age. That, that really gives rise and it should give rise to officers because something's wrong. Either they're wanted, uh, something, something is wrong. And so if you're not going to tell us who you are, we are going to probably handcuff you and detain you. You're not under arrest, but detain you and find out who you are. And we have mechanisms in our department to find out who you are if you don't have a driver's license. We have portable APHIS machines, which is how we found out that he was wanted. Now, yes, sir. this one is traffic stop. Really? Is he required, or is anybody required to present <coughs> any identification to an officer under the circumstances? If an, office, if an officer is investigating a, a criminal case or, an, or doing an investigation that could subsequently lead to a criminal case, the person has to identify themselves as long as they've been lawfully stopped. But there was no criminal case. There was no criminal case. He was investigating what he was doing. We don't know if he was going, knocking on doors, only to go around when someone didn't answer and break into the back of the house. We have no way of knowing. We see somebody going door to door, and we stop to investigate it. In the, in the recent months, there's been an uptick in crime in this particular neighborhood. And so the officer is hired to protect the neighborhood. And they see somebody going door to doors. We get calls like this every day of solicitors coming. And sometimes the solicitors are there for pure reasons, and sometimes the solicitors are there for nefarious reasons. So they could be knocking on a door, seeing if somebody answers, and if they don't answer, they'll go around to the back of the house and break into the house. We've even had people that have answered the door 
to a solicitor. They have uh, occupied the homeowner to the front of the house, and somebody has broken into the back of the house while they're talking to him in the front. So, oh, I'm sorry, I missed the part where you said, are you having the rangers come and do the internal affairs investigation, or what are you doing? We have taken an internal affairs statement from all the affected parties, with the only exception of the mother, who is coming in tomorrow. I am saying to the family, if there's any trepidation at all as to uh, their confidence in this office to conduct a fair and an impartial investigation, I am more than happy to forward this over to the Texas Rangers, and the Texas Rangers will investigate this matter completely. <coughs> and, but you have not done so yet. I have, not, I have made contact with the Rangers to let them know that I may be potentially sending them the case. I'm leaving it up to the family. I want the family to feel like this is a fair process. I don't believe our officers have done one thing wrong at all. But in an abundance of caution, if the family feels that they can't get a fair shake or they feel like there's a, an inherent bias with our department of doing a, a fair investigation, I have ev I'm happy, willing, and have already reached out to the Texas Rangers to conduct that investigation for us. Is, is this the officer or the deputy that was caught initially on video. Yes. He's, is he here? No. He's here. No, he's not. That, that's a different individual. That's correct. These deputy Gates. 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 Okay. Gates. Excuse and then these individuals are ones who responded after at their home. For these that guys, is correct. Right? That's correct. Okay. Why isn't the other officer? Uh, he, I don't know why was he didn't come. He can it, come. Was, I mean, was, he was to, invited. To answer that, I think that part, that part of the question is, is a good question. One of the things that we found during this investigation, Deputy Gates, remained at the initial scene, uh, where the initial scene was. There was two scenes. There was a scene at the, at the, where the, he was asked about his age, and then there was a second scene as, at his house after he evaded the police. So there was two scenes that the case, case remained at that scene, and these officers made the other scene. And the 2015 Oakland warrant? Yes. Can you explain that and what that, <coughs> what, what that uh, is? Apparently it was a charge from our office, so I'm, a, I'm assuming that it's our, our contract deputy that works in that neighborhood. Uh, got a call for service at their residence, and he was the suspect and ultimately was filed on for a threat of injury, uh, assault, but threat of injury to a person. And it, it was a case filed in October of 2015. Uh, it was a Class C misdemeanor, and uh, the, he let it turn into a warrant. So when original, originally stopped and questioned by the officer, that's why he really didn't want to say who he was. He had a copy of that uh, I don't. It's a ticket. Uh, I can get a copy of it if you'd like. Okay. Sure. Uh, and <coughs> I guess you've reviewed the body camera video a lot longer than what you should yes. have, right? Yes. And given that it's been such a short, fairly short amount of time, how confident are you for you to stand here for, before you, they've just made a complaint this morning mm -hmm. that your officers didn't do anything wrong? Is it possible they might have done something wrong? Maybe not maybe truth is somewhere between what you say and what, what the... Uh... I, th I, think, I think it's always possible that something may have been overlooked, but from a, from a... I've watched the video, I've read the reports, I've talked to the officers, uh, I've talked to other agencies that have engaged uh, Mr. Gibson and, and his brother and family. The same kind of, of adversarial uh, contact has been made in each agency. Uh, the other agencies had a very similar combative problem with Mr. Gibson as well. What do you think about um, their assertion, their attorney's um, assertion that they will, uh, depending on how you react with the internal affairs investigation, mm -hmm. that they will look into filing a civil rights lawsuit, especially because he was paid twice and dog bit him and, and various things like that? Um, I, I can't comment on that. If he feels like there was any kind of civil rights violation, uh, he should pursue whatever remedy he feels is necessary. Uh, what's most important to me as an administrator of an office is to ensure that our officers act and conduct themselves legally, professionally, and honestly. And I won't put up with anything less. Uh, many of y'all know me in this room. Y'all should know that I uh, would never allow anything. And so I, from the, the look that I have looked at, the videotape I have looked at, uh, and the reports that I have read, uh, our officers didn't do anything wrong. I think if Mr. Gibson would have just complied with giving the officer his information, he would have taken that. Even if it was discovered that he had a warrant, sometimes officers don't arrest people for Class C misdemeanors. Sometimes they tell the people, hey, look, 
you've got a Class C warrant for your arrest, please go take care of it. They don't want to get necessarily tied up or, or you know, they want to continue to go and fighting other more important crimes. So you're not always, and I can tell you citizens around Houston Harris County, many of them have had warrants. I know that when I was a patrolman and I pulled people over and they had a Class C warrant for a traffic violation, I didn't arrest them. I told them about it and said, hey, look, you've got a, an arrest warrant for your arrest. Please go take care of it. Here's the court that, that uh, the case fell in. And uh, so, you know, you can't automatically assume that an officer, when you have a Class C misdemeanor, is going to arrest you. Uh, I mean, we're doing everything we can to avoid arresting people and putting them in the Harris County Jail right now <laughs> uh, with, with criminal justice reform. So it's not always uh, you're going to be arrested. So in some cases, just say who you are. Don't lie about who you are. In fact, it, it, it elevates charges in some cases where if you're wanted and you run, you're now elevating the charges that are, you're going to be charged with. So I just, I never have understood why, you know, it's better to just be honest and, and face the music and be done with it. Yes, ma'am, Chairman. Uh, just are the basic facts of the, uh, I mean, the motivational, and I, I know you all be investigating, but the basic facts of this allegation mm -hmm. that uh, officers, deputies showed up at uh, Gibson's mother's home, mm -hmm. the door was broken down, canine went in, chased twice, he was bitten. Are those accurate as to the complaint, sort of the basic facts of the... The, the, uh, the door to the house was not broken down, so that's not accurate. No doors were broken down. No, there was a door on the inside where this where Mr. Gibson was hiding, a bathroom door that okay. was that was right. uh, breached, uh, but not a home. They were invited into the home. In fact, the sister stated, uh, "I don't know why he's running from the police. He's upstairs." Uh, we gave Mr. Gibson before the police dog even went upstairs. Mm -hmm. We told him four different times. We yelled, "Police dog! Police dog! Come out! Police dog! Police dog! Come out!" Uh, we gave a fair warning, which is normal and customary to do. Uh, we also, when we breached the door, we also asked him to stay put. He ran and hid further into a closet. We asked Mr. Gibson repeatedly, repeatedly to put his hands behind his back. Uh, six or eight times, Mr. Gibson didn't do so. Uh, Mr. Gibson wanted to argue the case and all this and that and the other. I feel, again, the officers gave a lot of warning. I understand the community's feel. I understand the relationship sometimes between law enforcement and, and community. I'm doing everything I can to fix that. Um, and so uh, there was a ton of fair warning. There was a lot of, of uh, you know, officer involved discussions to warn Mr. Gibson, you know, give yourself up, come on out. Uh, at no point did, did, did he comply. Were the minor children also handcuffed? No. That, no that's not, yeah, not that I'm aware of. No. I think there was an adult female that was handcuffed. It was secured. It was, it was secured. secured. Put, put in, when, when a dog is, when we're going to put a canine into a house, the last thing we want to do is put a canine to a house with people in there uh, because we don't want that canine to, to bite the wrong person. So we have to secure the, the, the other people that's in the house to ensure that that doesn't happen to them. Uh, we're there to make sure that everybody's safe and that nobody's home. So anytime somebody's secured, we're securing them for their safety. So not handcuffed, but put somewhere else? It yes, could they're be, they, they could be. It could be. They could be handcuffed. They could, could be, be placed in the back of a car, detained as witnesses until we're able to get the suspect into custody and get everything together and take statements from everybody. But no children were handcuffed? No. I can tell no. you that, that in, in, a case, in a case like this, if someone was, we don't, we, you got to look at the, the fact of the size of the, the, of the individuals in there. We have to look at the threat. We have to look at the, the situation. And we're trying to remedy that simple situation as soon as possible. So if we feel that it's necessary to do that, we would do that if we feel it's necessary. To do that. I'm not aware of any any body that, I mean, we're not saying, no, hey, how old, are, how old are you? <laughs> you know, we're looking, eyeballing people and, and seeing that. I'm not aware of any uh, juvenile that would have been uh, put in handcuffs. A juvenile may have been put in the back of a car uh, to contain them until we uh, contain the situation. This video going on to social media, was that uh, bad night under the pharmacy? No, I think, well, it was, first of all, it was, it was sort of manufactured, cut and paste, and, and things like that. Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you turn something 
that you claim is racially motivated, um, there's, uh, that sensationalizes things. And so I think that, uh, I, I don't know, many, uh, you know, our reputation at Precinct 1 pretty much speaks for itself. Uh, we do more than any other law enforcement agency in Harris County uh, to reach out and bond with and, and build a bridge with uh, our minority community. Um, I spend more time as an elected official in those communities, Cashmere Gardens, Acres Homes, than I do any other community. Uh, so, you know, it does it shed a bad light, I think, when you have one side of a story being told that's not factual, and then we come out and give you the real side of the story. Um, you know, I think that temporarily it can shed a bad light, but I think in the long run, uh, the facts are going to come out. Um, I'm transparent. I'm happy to send this case to the Texas Rangers, which is completely independent of us. Uh, and, and so we have absolutely nothing to hide. Anybody else? My name is Lofton Harrison. I'm the chief, uh, assistant chief over the patrol division and over the internal affairs division. Thank you for